Gosh, you're looking swell. You smell an awful lot like <coughs> flowers. <laughs> Greetings. I am hoping y'all are going to have a delightful day filled with delight of the Most High God. And uh, today is a special day for me as well as for anybody that lived in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina, which I did. The Lord guided me out 10 days before it hit, before it was even a, um, a it wasn't even called a hurricane then, but I, I knew his voice and I obeyed him and I left, so I did make it out. You know, everything was destroyed, but that's okay. The Lord provided. Um, but it was 18 years ago today, on this very day, that I seen the worst wreck I ever seen. Oh, Tell them large Marge sent you. <laughs> Anybody knows that that movie it was Pee Wee Herman? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to stick to what Father's showing me. So I just uh, came out of another pretty pretty well done attack by uh, witchcraft and my disobedience. Okay, I was very 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 disobedient and I am very 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 sorry and uh, we're not to be part of the world and I look just like the world with what I was doing so I've been repenting and I am grateful for everything that happened all the attacks that happened all the witchcraft all the sabotage all the theft just the bizarre things like just I won't get into it because I'm trying to stick to what Father is showing me, okay, that I want to sh share with y'all. But I'm grateful because had that not happened, I wouldn't have really sat and checked myself and realized, what am I doing? I'm going back into the world. I'm being just like the world. We're to, we're to not be part of the world. We're a peculiar, peculiar, bleh, peculiar people. What the heck is in this coffee? <laughs> and uh, so we're not supposed to blend in. And that's what I was trying to do. Failed again. So I've been in repentance for that and repentance for anyone that I hurt while I was, you know, sinning. I was sinning and living as part of the world because I used the excuse, well, the attacks are so bad. That's when we have to really dig in, get our Bibles, and really seek the Lord. But when you have witch, you know, witches amongst you, um, it becomes a problem. That's why Father said, be ye separate. Father has called us, if you're one of us, to be alone for a reason. Okay? He wants us to be with him, and he'll teach us. And I'm telling you all, even though it's really lonely, I feel so much better by myself. And I can honestly say that. And it's like, every once in a while, I want, you know, companionship, someone to hang out with, someone to talk to. And it, but it it's never goes good. And that's because Father called us out of the world. So when you go against the Most High God's guidance to stay by yourself, trust me, it's not going to go well. But I am very, very grateful, including I'm grateful for the witches and all those that attacked me during this last bout with Lucy the Lion Loser. I'm actually grateful because, like I said, had this not have happened, I would not have wholeheartedly sat down and thought about, wow, I am doing this. I am not being, I'm not living righteously. I'm making excuses for sinning. I'm being as the world, and I'm so grateful that the Lord did not allow me to die in my sins. It's really scary, y'all. So everything the enemy uses to harm us, Father Church turns it for our good if we truly repent and seek him. And this last one was so bad. This last, like, attack after attack after attack was so bad that it's really scared me, like, as in, Put the fear of the Lord inside of me for real. So I'm praying to Father to continue to give me strength. And remember, he said, resist the devil and he will flee. And I wasn't resisting. I was inviting the devil in. 
I was hanging out with the devil. So that girl be the devil. Bobby Boucher, you get out of here. Speaking of that, again, getting back to Hurricane Katrina. So that was 18 years ago today on this very day. And it, it went, it actually lasted for three days when it hit. It hit in Plaquemines Parish, which is, I know most of y'all don't know New Orleans, but I lived there for like 20 years, all right? Um, it has a special place in my heart, but I know New Orleans is under judgment. So that's what I'm here to talk to y'all about. Um, it hit Plaquemines Parish first, and then they blew the levees. Yes, they did. And I had two friends that stayed behind, one in the seventh ward, one in the ninth ward. And they heard the levees blow by the army corpse of you know what. And so it was a test run. And they filled up New Orleans like a bowl because New Orleans is under sea level. So it filled up like a bowl. Okay. But Father allowed it to shake his people, shake his people. Wake up, wake up. Why don't you put on a little makeup? And so it's interesting that now, 18 years to the day later, like I said, it hit on the, it hit on the 29th, early in the morning, early in the morning, um, <laughs> in Plaquemines Parish, which is outside of Orleans Parish. And then that's when they used that to destroy New Orleans. Um, and it lasted from the 29th to the 31st. So I find that interesting that we have not one, but two. One is a huge hurricane that's coming in. And guess what? I'm in the eye of the tiger. I am pretty much in the eye of it. But I did tell, I, I did warn, I went around and warned everyone to repent that Father was going to judge and all these different cities that are in the path of it, I've gone back three times to each city and warned and told them to repent and stop doing their witchcraft and their Freemasonry and turn to Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And so I don't have any fear. Father told me to leave the last place that I was last week and... Um, I won't go into details, but um, the ride didn't work out, and I'm praying for her. I love her, even though I know some things Father's revealed to me. I'm praying because none of us are perfect. I screw up all the time, and I'm really, really taking a deep look at myself through because of this last attack. And looking at all the things that I'm doing that I need to repent for and get out. Because we're not to have sin. We have to be made clean, wiped clean. We can't go to heaven with dirty linen on. We have to be clothed. In Thank you, Father. And there is the sirens. Thank you, Father. Um, so, it's supposed to be headed right towards me <laughs> again. So... This will be, if it hits, this will be four times that I've been in a serious, including Irma. A lot of y'all remember, a lot of y'all that were on the other channel, Jubilina Redeemed. Um, I know Sis Jeannie remembers because she was on the phone with me saying, you're not going to leave. And I said, no, Father told me to stay. So Father guided me out of New Orleans 10 days before it was even a hurricane. And Father told me to stay in Key West, I mean Key West where it was supposed to have a direct hit in 2017 from Hurricane Irma. And there was only 5% of the city that stayed, and I was one of them. We weren't allowed out. Three days before, the National Guard came and they locked the only way out, because it's an island, right? Um, they locked it down, and they said, anybody that stays, this is actually what they were saying on the news. I don't watch the news, but... The person I was living with was had the news blasting, and it said, um, anyone staying in Key West, any of the Keys, but especially Key West, where it's supposed to take a direct hit, you need to get a, a magic marker and, and write your Social Security on your arm so we'll know how to, or who you were and to be able to identify you, because it was supposed to get 15 feet of waves. The waves, the waves! I went around the whole city, because... 
I don't drive 55 on my bike and prayed over the entire Key West, which is very small. It's only four miles long or four miles wide and like seven miles long. But I prayed over the main part of Key West and I went around and I prayed on every corner for protection. And then I, I did it like three times in my neighborhood. Once it started to, you know, the wind really picked up, I just stuck to my neighborhood, which was called Bahama Village. And it missed us by 15 miles. And people were freaked out that I stayed. And Sarah Fourth Calling, Sister Karen, who's gone on to be with Yeshua, she remembers it too, but I know Jeannie does, Sis Jeannie, because um, they were both on the phone with me saying, you're not going to leave, and, but they knew my faith and they knew I could hear Father's voice, so, and it missed us. And of the, all Key West, our neighborhood got the least damage. So that's what I'm trying to tell y'all is what this topic's going to be about is our faith, our faith and our obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And I have not been obedient. I've been a bad sheep. Okay. So it's, we're at the last end of the stretch of the race. I can see the victory line before us. Okay. We're that close. So Father has his angels up up there cheering us on, okay? So now let me tell y'all what Father's showing me. So there's two storms co coming. Um, one is coming supposedly pretty close to where I'm at or possibly will hit it. And I knew Florida was under heavy judgment, especially uh, Key, West, I mean Key West, where I lived. And another place I lived where I started this channel, which was called St. Pe Petersburg, Florida. I call it St. Saint Saint Pete, which is by Tampa. And y'all please pray for Brother Lewis from Grand Supreme News Channel because he is in Tampa and he's staying. But he has faith. He can hear the Most High's voice. So I know he's going to be okay. But we still pray, okay? And pray for everybody in the path of this thing because they're saying it's going to be a cat four, but I have a feeling it's going to be worse. Oh, there's my nice hair. <laughs> I got my glasses. But you can't see my face. Oh, snap. Anyway, <laughs> so it's called, let's see, the name of the storm. Why don't you just tell me the name of the storm? Okay, I will. So the name of the storm is called I, Idilia. Let me see. I wrote it down. I have so much, so many notes in like three different notebooks. It's hard for me to stay focused, focused, focused factor. Okay, I got it. So it's called Idilia. Okay, and Father immediately showed me Idol, Idil, I A. Okay, so Idol, false idol. He's once all the false idols gone out of our life. And my false idol was the sin that I struggle with, which most of y'all know, I'm not going to even repeat it on here. So um, that's an idol. Another idol is if you're focusing on all your attackers all the time and not talking about the most high God, which I'm guilty of. Guilty is charged. Okay. But as guilty as I am for a lot of the bad things I've done, once you repent and you give your life to Yeshua and you truly are in repentance, we can't keep going back and sinning. And that's what I was doing. And I was using the excuse, all these attacks, I can't take it anymore, okay? That's what Satan wants. That's why he's, he's ramped things up. If your attacks have been turned up, the heat is on full blast on 10, on high heat, you better bet that you better, you better, you bet that you are about to go to the next level with the most high God. So you don't want to be pushed back down into a lower level and then bring your brothers and sisters in Christ into it with you. So yeah, that's what I was dealing with. So I've been repenting and I'm asking y'all for prayers to, you know, just, just pray for me, okay, y'all? Pray for me to have strength. Um, 
But what Father showed me is that we need to be praising him in the midst of what? The storm. Because it strengthens us. Every time the enemy and the witches and the gang stalkers and the bumbling buffoons attack us, that is more judgment on their heads and more blessings for us, but it's also purifying us. Every attack that you make it through, it lifts you up. We can't sink back down into the pit, and that's what I was starting to do. So I'm just grateful Father, Father solved what the problem was. <laughs> there were several things going on, which I'm not going to disclose, but he came and, and helped and lifted me back up. So like I said, I'm just so grateful. And I'm grateful for all of y'all on this channel, even the witches, even the Freemasons, because without y'all, I wouldn't be where I am with the Most High God. I wouldn't know, have known his voice ever. If this, if this gang stalking, this targeting wouldn't have happened to me years ago when I woke up in 2012, I would still be where I was then and I would be lost. And again, I'm definitely not perfect at all. And I really fell, fell really deep this past time, but Father was revealing to me that there are witches that have infiltrated the camp, our camp, the Most High God's camp. So you need to obey his voice if he tells you to stay by yourself, which I've told y'all, I've been telling y'all, we are called to stay by ourselves. if you're one of, the, one of us, okay? If you're a true follower of Yeshua, we have to stay by ourselves. Father put us by ourselves. If some of y'all are married, you know, it just means hopefully you're, you're married to another believer, but it, you know, it means to stay with the Lord, go into your prayer closet. But most of us that have been called to, to a different, uh, I don't know, a different position, we're a peculiar people. We are probably, almost every one of us are alone, and a lot of us are homeless. So, um, yeah. I have a place again, another place I had to move again, and uh, but I'm only here for, I don't know, a, a few days, maybe a week. So I don't know. I'm, I'm praying that I can stay longer, but I just had to move again, y'all. I'm just grateful that the Lord didn't let me die in my sins. So now let's get back to this. So the idyllia, which is on the way, on the move. Is this recording? Yes, okay. Don't you love my hair? <laughs> um, okay, so, Idilia. Father told me that that meant idol, false idol, idol worship. He wants anything that comes before him out. And that's what he's revealed to me over the past few days, is that I was making different things an idol including focusing on what the enemy was doing. I was spending more time talking about what the enemy was doing and looking at what the enemy was doing rather than focusing on Father. And it led me back into sin and uh, wrong people that I had told you know to stay away and then I allowed them back and just a lot of bad choices. And once you open that door, that crack in your armor, it gets wider and wider. More demons can infiltrate. And I believe that true followers of Yeshua, even though we have the Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit will leave us when we have filled our temple with rotten things. It will leave because it can't dwell in filth. And that's what happened. And then we lose our protection. So just be aware of that. If you go into sin, you lose your protection from Father. All right. So today, like I said, I'm going to try to focus now on what he's shown me with the hurricanes. Idilia, idol, and then I-A, okay? I-A, Satan twists everything upside down. What Father does, he mocks. And so I-A... Switch it to A-I. That's how you spe spell Idilia. I-A is the last two letters of this hurricane coming straight to a town near you and me. Um, is A-I, okay? This is A-I, the beast system. 
So idol worship and AI is coming. It's a wake up call. Father told me, seek me with all your heart. Start your day focused on me, even though you may have to move and be homeless during a storm, a, a hurricane, not just a storm. Keep your eyes on me and I will direct your path. Do not pay attention to the enemy, the gang stalkers, the witches, and all that kind of stuff. Resist the devil and he will flee. All right? And what Father guided me to was Lamentations. And it's Lamentations 1, 18. The Lord is righteous, for I have rebelled against his commandment. Hear ye, I pray you, all people, and behold my sorrow. Okay? My virgins and my young men go into captivity. So what Father was showing me was that he's seeing that I've been remorseful and that I've recognized that I was rebelling against him. And that this is where we have to check ourselves. So our brothers and sisters, if you love one another, you need to check each other as well and say, you know, maybe think about this. or So, yeah. I was not living righteously this last two weeks. So anyway. Let's, let's move on. Moving along. So, idyllia. Then Father told me, look up what it means. Well, why don't you just tell me what it means, okay? So, again, hold on a second. Talk amongst yourselves. Idyllia, which is the hurricane coming, it's supposed to be a cat four, means behold the sun. S-U-N is also S-O-N. So I took that as another sign from Father. But it gets more cool. Then they're saying it's supposed to be a cat four. Cat. Cat-trina. Katrina is spelled K-A-T. Cat. Okay? Cat-trina. Cat four. And th that was a cat five. What is a four? Four stands for the four angels holding back the four winds. They are being released. I've been saying that. The four angels have released the winds. Um, but here's another amazing part. So then after that, again, every, every day that I do this, I ask Father what he wants me to know for the day. I close the Bible and then I open it. Wherever my eyes go, that's where I'm to read. And then I'll, if I'm led, sometimes I'm only led to do it to two or three scriptures. Sometimes it may be, you know, more than that. So today, the second thing that I opened to was this. Uh, Mark. 35, or Mark, I'm sorry, Mark 4, so there's the 4 again, Mark 4, 35 through 41. Listen up, y'all, this is amazing. And the same day when the, when the even was come, he said it unto them, this is Yeshua, Jesus, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat unto the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awakened him. This is the disciples awakening Jesus and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said unto one another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? That was amazing to me that I opened to that this morning on the day of Katrina during a storm that arose, and Father reminded me. So this isn't about me. I'm trying to use what he's 
guided me through with these storms, and now I'm in faith staying where I'm at until he guides me to the next place because we have to know his voice and obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice, and I was being a very disobedient child. Very, very disobedient, y'all, the past couple weeks. So, And again, using all these horrendous attacks as an excuse. Instead of falling on my knees and just begging Father to help me get through it. But like I said, once you open that door, you that crack in your armor, Satan's going to keep hammering it. He's going to put a wedge in there until it cracks open. Then you're full-on demon-possessed. So that's really scary, right? Remember uh, the scripture where uh, the demons were cast out of the man and then they went around looking for another house, which is our temple, and then when they, which is our body, right? And then when they couldn't find one, they went back, and the demon brought seven more demons, and the man was worse than he was in the beginning. He had an empty shell. He didn't fill it with what? Food of the spirit. This is our food, y'all. This is what we need. In the end of days, it says, wow. <laughs> in the end of days, it says that there will be a great famine in the land, but not of food, but of hearing the word of the Lord. And I'm seeing it now, y'all. I'm, I'm really seeing it. We stick out, okay? So if you try to go back into the world, it's not going to go well for you. Trust me. Okay, so what else was amazing about this is this scripture right here, this one part, is where it says, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Which is Mark 4, 41. Ah! <laughs> Live on Jesus TV. I love it. I just noticed this. Right here. So it's, see this? Hold on. If y'all aren't watching, I'm, I'm pointing at this. But y'all can get your own Bible. Sorry about the scribble. That's 41, right? And it's from... Well, you can't see the four, but this obviously would be four because that's five right after it. One, four, four. That is amazing. But what I was going to say is that very scripture right there, I never knew it was Mark. I knew what the scripture was, but I didn't notice it was one, four, four backwards or four, four, one. So it's 144,000 backwards. That's amazing. That very scripture was on my boat. It was the only like artwork or whatever it would really artwork it was a scripture but it was framed and it was in blue and white and anybody that remembers when I first started the channel and I lived aboard my little boat funny there's the sea and the waves right that's what I had on the boat it was so small there was no room for anything else to hang but I had that hanging and now father's reminding me of that so fast forward what seven years it's amazing. Seven-year tribulation. Just everything he does is amazing. We could never come up with this on our own. So that's going on with Idelia. He's wants to get, he's destroying everything. He's allowing the enemy to do this, to purify everyone, to get people to wake up, to shake them. A great shaking comes at the end, right? And so hopefully it's still working. And so that's what he's, he's doing right now. And like I said, I have no way to leave unless he provides it. So until he provides a way, then I'm to remain in place and have no fear. We're, to, we're supposed to have faith, 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 because you got to have faith. So then that leads me to the next. Um, let's see. about faith, which was Mark, it's in the same scripture, Mark 440. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? 
So we're, Father is wanting us to really dig in deep and really, really seek him and spend our time with him instead of with the world. The world hates us, okay? So there's no reason to, to try to be friends with the world because they're dragging, they, they will drag you down with them. All right, so next part. Then it was, I was led to the next part of the scripture, which is Mark 5, 15 through 17. And they came to Jesus and said him, saw him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed. This is after Jesus cast out the legion of demons. And the man that was cutting himself, remember, and he was chained to the rocks and nothing could restrain him sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid because when people are demon possessed they're not in their right mind and for me like if you drink and you have a blackout which or whatever if you smoke pot if you do whatever kind of drugs pills whatever it is and you have a blackout you left the building elvis has left the building and the demon is operating through you. So you're speaking what the demon is saying. Have you heard of people that say, I don't know why I killed them or I don't know why I did this. I don't remember. They're not lying. They don't remember. It's demonic. And these demons, you can bet there are legions sent to the end time saints, y'all. That's you. That's you on this channel. They're, they are waiting for us to slip up and sin. And then they wiggle their, they worm their way in like wormwood, which by the way, is here. Okay. So Mark 5, 15 to 17. So I read that first part about, and they came to Jesus to see him that was possessed with the devil. And he had a legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. Remember, he cast the demons into the swine. The pigs, boss hog. <laughs> Get them, Flash. Go, go. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. Even that. The queen of the coast, the mermaid's the mermaids are coming back. The uh, queen of the coast is coming out of the sea. The beast that rises out of the sea, Leviathan. This is all about to take place. These creatures are coming out of the sea, and they will be taking over people. They will be destroying places. I mean, this is going to be wild, y'all. But they, they prayed. All the people, instead of going, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you for helping this poor man. Now he's back to normal again. Were they grateful? No, they were scared. They liked their demons. And they so they prayed for him to leave. Well, if you're being run from city to city, state to state, coast to coast, hello, McFly, that means you're doing good because they did the same thing to Jesus, Yeshua, okay? All right. So, also, we have another hurricane coming on the other side. So, it's going up Florida on one side, supposed to hit St. Pete, where I lived, on the boat. Amazing Grace was the name of the boat, y'all, if you're new to this channel. Well, this is a new channel, but my Jubilina channel, if you, if you hadn't really heard it, uh, that's when I started my channel, and I was... Uh, moored and then I was uh, docked in St. Pete, Florida, a little tiny sailboat because I couldn't afford an apartment and father told me to get a boat, not get a rope, get a boat. And I was really nervous because that's all the money I had. I didn't do you, boob. I had no way to make any money. I was blacklisted from work and um, couldn't even couldn't even get jobs uh, raking leaves and things like that that I was doing beforehand. Um, and so I was really nervous because it was the only little bit of money I had that I'd saved. And Father told me, no, I want you to live aboard this boat. And he started teaching me things on the boat. And I asked him for a sign. And he gave me two signs dealing with hawks, which I won't get into because I'm making this too long. 
But the main sign that I knew it was Father speaking is when he told me to ask the name of the boat. Why don't you just tell me the name of the boat? I didn't even think about that. The name of the boat was Amazing Grace, y'all. An old sailboat that I had to bail water out of. Some of y'all remember. It's on my old videos. If you go back to 2016, well, actually, I think it would be 2017. Yeah, 2016 and 2017. And I got the boat on 111. Yeah, that's right. January 11th. It's just amazing. Oh, wow. Wow, I just remembered. And the address was 101. 101. So now this, wow. Thank you, Father. None of this was planned here. This part, I was just going to tell y'all about the other storm, which is coming off the other side, which will be going up the East Coast. It's called Franklin. Well, as luck would have it, in New Orleans, for a little while, I lived, maybe like six months, I lived on Franklin Avenue at 1011 Franklin Avenue. And I'm not even joking. 101. He gives us signs. What is 111 and 1111? It's a gateway. It's a path. Are you taking the right-hand path, the narrow gate, or are you going into the wide gate? Okay, so, but anyway, this is the other hurricane. What does Franklin mean? Franklin means landowner or free. So back during Hurricane Katrina, back to back, then we had Hurricane Rita, and people were joking in Galveston, which is another island, um, that we don't need a Rita, we don't need one of these kind of Ritas, we need a margarita. <laughs> so they um, used that as a, like a, a trigger word for me, but Father has revoked that. And uh, what the enemy has done to his children, to the Most High God's children, is reversing now. It's going back on their head. If we're in obedience, if not, you're not protected, okay? Because we're sinning, we're, we're being bad, bad children, okay? Against Father, if we sin. We have to keep our eyes focused on Him. Do not look left or right. In all your ways, acknowledge me, and I will direct your path, is what Father keeps telling me. But Franklin, so back then it was, so <clears throat> Rita actually meant um, cleanse. Katrina means purge. So what did Father do? First he purged, okay? He got rid of the, the bad and gave people a wake-up call, and then he cleansed it with Rita. And this is the same thing. This is amazing. So we have Idilia, get rid of the false idols, AI, the beast system, do not conform to the beast system, do not submit, do not sell your soul, do not bow down to the mark of the beast. Idilia, and it's also behold the sun. Watch for father, look up into the sky for father, okay? Keep your eyes on the Most High God. So he's going to be doing another purging and cleansing, and then landowner are free. We're free. We're free spirits. We go home. But we only go home. If this would have been last week and Yeshua came, I would be in hell. I would be burning in hell. And I hope they burn in hell. I'm Samuel Jackson. Oh, a shark. A shark ate me. I'm sorry, y'all. I get off track and I'm wired on coffee. Actually, I've only had one cup. Can you believe it? All right. Um, Father also wanted me to encourage some of y'all that have been trying to warn people and you're being mocked. And I, I get spit on sometimes. They don't ever, Father protects it from hitting me, but they try to aim it at me. Just a lot of ridicule, a lot of bizarre, bizarre attacks. Literally, we're watching the movie, They Live. And Father wanted me to encourage y'all with this. This is Mark 6, 4. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And some of our worst attacks come from those who profess to be Christians or believers or one of the 144,000, some of our worst attacks. And it's not just with me, it's with several other people that I know. And uh, like I said, we're 
We're to be separate. We're scattered all throughout the earth. We're a light grid. So when, if we were all in one place, number one, the enemy would really know how where to attack all of us at once. But we make a light grid. So say you're a light, and then and you're one of the 144, or a believe just just a believer. Okay. I'm not even going to talk about the 144. I'm going to talk about being a true believer, a follower of Yeshua. You're a light. You're a beam of light. Ultraviolet. Radio light. The solar system. On a beam of light. Telecommunication, telecommunication. <laughs> That's an old song. I don't know. It just popped into my head. Get it out. But say... You're, you have a light, the Holy Spirit in you, and you're in text ace, okay? And then there's another one, another one of us, another light that's in California, and then another one in Michigan, but all of us are connected. It's a light grid, just like Satan has his web, his web of lives, wor lies the worldwide web, the... 5G, yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's got like a buzzing sound. All these cables running all over America. It's a grid, okay, to keep the light down, to dim our light. And it's, if you don't, if you're not following Yeshua, okay, if it was able to attack me, if these demonic spirits and witches and and all these evil things are coming against someone that actually really believes in Yeshua can you imagine how bad they attack someone that doesn't it's really scary y'all and we're we're strong in Christ but not if we sin our armor gets broken okay so I am um I'm taping and silly putting and uh Gorilla gluing my armor back together. Or I'm not doing it. Father's doing it. Slowly but surely he's doing it. All right. So, but I have to do my part by seeking him. Being in, dis being in disobedience is mocking him. Okay? And I've been so sorry for that. And for not being a good mentor, I guess. And, uh, and I apologize to you uh, for, for doing that, y'all. So, and when I'm saying it's okay, Father knows that we are going through all this. It's okay if you slip up and you do all this stuff. It's, it's really not. I was lying to myself. And so we got to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord, okay? And he will, he will help us. He will help us get over it, get through it. All these fiery darts, they ain't no joke, yo. Okay. see what else um, okay like I said everything the enemy does to harm us the witchcraft attacks the gang stalking the targeting the theft the lies the persecution of people that are supposedly our friends that are really Judas's that are part of the world right that, that aren't really believers the, um, the accuser accuses us night and day. And guess what? He was right. I was, I was guilty. Guilty is charged. You need to go up to the gates, or not the gates. You need to go to the courtroom in heaven. And you need to ask Father to have Yeshua plead your case because he's our attorney in heaven. So Satan stands and he accuses us night and day. We're guilty as charged when we're, I mean, there's a lot of things that he lies about, right? But these things that he was bringing that have been brought to my attention that I was doing, I'm guilty of it. And so I asked Father, you know, let Yeshua plead my case. I'm guilty as charged. And he has, he has, uh, what do you call it? He's let me go. Okay? 
He's paid the price. Yeshua paid the price for our sins, for our guilt, by what he did on the cross for us. And we need to be grateful for that because we live in a flesh suit. This is a fallen, demonic, evil, satanic, nasty, perverted, hateful world. And of course, you know, we slip up, but it's like I wasn't battling. I was giving in. I was giving in to it, and I was l allowing wrong people around me. And even though I stood up to them and told them to, to stay away or whatever, then I would, I would uh, get a weak moment and go, oh, well, I needed a ride, so, and I made excuses. And so now I'm, I'm dealing with, a, with the consequences of it. But Father is giving me the joy of the Lord again. He's giving me my my joy back, my humor back, which I'm so grateful for. I, I laughed for the first time, I don't know in how long, a real actual laugh yesterday, y'all. It was like, thank you, Father, thank you. I hadn't laughed, y'all, and I don't know, a real laugh, like a, maybe a tiny little laugh, but it wasn't like filled with the joy of the Lord. Like I had a little funny thing yesterday. So anyway, I'm just grateful for that. I'm grateful for y'all. Um, a couple of y'all, actually, it's actually just one person. Her name starts with a T, and it's an T-A, okay, because there's some other T's on here. <laughs> but um, T-A, that's all I can say. T-A, that's all I can say. Um, she has faithfully donated for I don't know how long. I thank you so much, sister. I know it doesn't seem like much to you, but it's a big deal to me because it shows that someone remembers, someone someone cares, someone actually, there's a true believer out there that actually is caring because in the world, these people of the world, they know that I'm homeless, even though I had a roof, okay? And I have a roof right now again, but it's just for a few days. Um, but they will still, even though they have houses and jobs, and cars, and again, this isn't a woe is me, I'm telling y'all how the world is. They still take advantage, worldly people that don't believe in Jesus, they take advantage and borrow and don't pay back, or even worse, steal. Well, actually, they're both just as bad because it's still, it's still pretty bad. And then mock and laugh, and they think that our kindness is weakness, but it's actually, it takes way more strength to be kind in these final days than it does to be a sellout, a satanic sellout, and be part of the world. So give yourself a, a thumbs up if you're, if you're still keeping your kind heart and you're keeping your faith in the Most High. So anyway, behold the sun is idyllia. So get rid of your idols. Anything that you that you do, that you focus on more than the Most High God. Then Father said, Cat 4, Cat 4 Hurricane, the four angels holding back the four winds, Idelia, Behold the Sun, and then Franklin, Free, Landowner. And that landowner could mean, you know, since most of us on here, I've never owned any home, any nothing, um, that we're going to have homes in heaven. I'm like, Father, I don't even need a home. Give me a shack in the back. I don't need a mansion in heaven. Just give me a shack in the back. I'll be homeless in heaven any day, Father. Just get me out of here, mister. 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 Get me out of here, mister. <laughs> so what Father was showing me is that when we're going through these trials, count it all joy. Start praising him. I have to remind myself of this. Start praising Father when you're having all these attacks because it means that you're being, you're being refined by fire. Fire. Fire in the hole. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's called you. He's chosen you to go through this fiery trial, which most could not stand a week, a day, some. Some couldn't stand an hour of this. They'd give up. And so we are... The remnant. So we have to be not of the world. We can't be part of the world. Okay, so then Father said, um, let's see. 
after he was showing me all these things that I was doing that was displeasing to him, including complaining, focusing on the enemy and what the enemy was doing, using the enemy, attacking me as an excuse to sin, um, being angry, he showed me this. How do you overcome that? You overcome these evil spirits that torment these witchcraft attacks, these gang stalking attacks, by living in the fruit of the spirit. So this is Galatians 5:22 through 23. What is the fruit of the spirit? Love is the first one, joy, peace, forbearance, and funny, I did not know what that meant forbearance. Real I mean I kind of do, but I didn't know exactly until right now this morning. Forbearance. And that's one of the things I struggle with. And it's funny that I didn't know what it means. And what does Father say? He says that my people perish for what? Lack of knowledge. So I looked it up. If y'all don't know what forbearance means, it means patient, self-control, restraint, and tolerance. Okay? And when you sin, you're not having self-control and restraint. So I was like, wow, Father. When you're angry, you're not having self-control or restraint. He said, hold, hold your peace and I will fight for you. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So let me start again. The fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Y'all need to study this, y'all. This is important. This is how we overcome the beast. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faith, or faithfulness, same thing, gentleness, and self-control. And it's funny, self-control is the last one, but it's similar to forbearance. So Father put something similar twice. That's because that's what all of us struggle with the most, self-control. And how do we have self-control? By letting the Holy Spirit control us, not the flesh, not the ego, not the demons. There's demons all around us trying to tempt us, whispering in our ear, telling us lies. This one said this, this one said that. Oh, look at what they're doing. Oh, they're out here doing this on purpose. Oh, I'm going to get mad. And then you give your energy to the enemy and they feed off of it. They're, they're uh, what do you call it? They're bottom feeders. The evil of this world, the people that have sold out to Satan, they feed their bottom feeders. Like in, I used to have a fish tank and the fish that ate the poop of the other fish on the bottom, it was called a pacostomus, but it's a bottom feeder. They eat poo poo and they stink. Why do you think the fallen smell like sulfur and, and poo poo and the demons smell of sulfur? Because they're bottom feeders. They feed off of lower energy and they want to lower our energy and bring us down with them. They want to drag us down with them. So if you're hanging out with a non-believer, hello, McFly, guilty as charged. I did it um, just this last week. Um, when you're hanging out with a non-believer, they're not going to go up to your level. They're going to drag you down because they've got tons of demons and then their demons lash onto you and you become worse than you were before. Just like the man that I was just saying that was freed of the demons and they went into the swine, the pigs, the cops, the <laughs> a lot of, a lot of cops. I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. They are possessed by demons that's why they're acting the way they're, they are, because they sold out to the system. They work for Satan. They're of Satan's army. And it's, it's, it's really sad. So anybody that sold their soul to Satan, took the, and all that, you can bet they have lots of demons. I've been seeing them manifest, even in someone that said they were a believer. So it's, and, and actually... I was being taken over by demons and I have the Holy Spirit. So how scary is that? And people say, if you have the Holy Spirit, you can't be possessed by demons. Wrong. Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Because think about it. 
if you are filling your vessel with negative things like drinking, okay, which is poison, alcohol. Alcohol is a demon, alcohol, okay? It's an ancient demon. What does alcohol mean? It means flesh eating spirit. Why do you think they call alcohol spirits? And I know this and I did it anyway. That's the, that is the persecution that we're under of the mind. This is a battle of the mind. Satan wants your mind. Once you focus on him and you start giving in to him, he's got you. Then he's sending more of his agents, his demonic spirits. And then you've got all these holes in your armor. It's like, just imagine a bright light, right? And then something pierces through it. And then it's got like a little hole that comes out. Or no, let me take that back. How could I say this? All right, we'll, we'll use a pancake, okay? I'm just trying to think of something flat. <laughs> so there was a pancake and you're cutting it and a little hole poked in it. And then you hold it up to the light like somebody that's making a face with pancakes, like maybe some of y'all's dads used to do that. And they make little holes for the eyes and the mouth and they hold it up. And then that light comes through the other side. And then you stab it again, you stab it again, and then there's more holes. And then pretty soon the pancake starts crumbling and then it falls, it crumbles, it goes to what? Ashes, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Thank you, Father. So once you open that door, that crack in your armor to sin, you, let, you start hanging out with non-believers and even worse, those that were sent to harm you, people doing witchcraft, your armor is getting more holes in it and more demons can come in. So say, here's, here's my cup, all right? And I've got like old rotten coffee in it. Actually, it's not rotten, but just say it's old stale coffee that's been sitting out for a couple of days. And I'm like, man, this tastes yucky and it stinks. And I pour it out. There's nothing else in the cup, right? If I don't fill the cup with anything and I leave it sitting out, a fly might get in it or whatever. Some bugs might go on it. The bottom of it might start crusting up. Nothing good is going to go into it until you fill it with something good. So you rinse it out, you clean it, you, you clean it with soap and water, and then you fill it with something positive like the, the living water, the, the water of light. I mean, the, the living water that Yeshua gives us. But light, water is life. That's why also they're attacking the water, right? The water supply. Thank you again, Father. And you fill it up. And then you start drinking it again. And then it gets lower and lower. It, like I said, if you don't keep filling it up, it's going to start to evaporate. The water, wow, thank you, Father. The, this is all him. This is the most high. The water will start to evaporate. And then you have an empty cup again. And then the flies and the bugs and the rottenness get in again. You have to continually fill your vessel with the living water. This. Reading your Bible. Seeking the Lord. Praying. Even laughter. Laughter, the joy of the Lord. He loves it when we laugh. Um, praising him. Singing worship songs. Playing worship songs, which I haven't been doing in I don't know how long. And that really helps us, y'all, when, when it's positive music, not this devil poop okay so be careful what you're listening to and what your eyes are gazing on because it affects us and it's subliminal and um, <clears throat> a lot of music is meant to destroy your soul that's another topic of, I'm going to stick to this so Fruit of the Spirit, again, is love, joy, peace, forbearance, <clears throat> which means patience, self-control, restraint, and tolerance. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions, desires, and since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become <clears throat> Let us not become concentrating on envying, conceited, provoking, or envying each other, okay?
So lift your brothers and sisters up in Christ. Encourage them. If they're sinning, you know, tell them, hey, snap out of it. What's going on? Let, let, can I help you? What, what do you need help with? All right? Let's see. Is there anything else? There's a lot more, but I'll, I'll come back on. Maybe not today. I always say that, and if I say it, then I don't do it, so I'm not going to say it. So what Father showed me? Yesterday, I had a dream that I was in my old subdivision, which I lived at as a child growing up, you know, until I graduated high school. And the, the subdivision had two brick walls on either side that you drive into, the entrance of it, with, with a gate on it. And on either side was um, statues. And I dreamt of those not... Well, I only slept two hours today, and I am full of joy of the Lord. I, I feel like I slept seven hours, so that's amazing. But um, last night, so night before last, um, was that I was going into that subdivision again, like visiting my past, right? But the statues were lions, okay, the lion's gate. If y'all saw that video I did, I think I did it on the Jubilina Redeem channel. It's amazing what Father gave me these uh, lion's cake. Let me, let me see, if this, if this cuts off, I'll come back on and show you all these pictures, but hold on. <clears throat> so the lion's gate, which is a portal, opened in heaven on, it was last month, I think it was on the 28th. Whatever day it was that it opened, I got pictures of it. Father called me outside to take the pictures, and it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I'm, I'm not even joking. I wish this camera did it justice, but I'm going to show you all what I saw. And I shared it on another video, and then I'm going to tell you all why this is important. Hold on, i got to go through a bunch of pictures. So I'll just go ahead and say that the, the gate is opening. We have a full moon, a super moon, and it's also a blue moon starting tomorrow, the 30th. When these two hurricanes, possibly three or four, but one on either side of where I'm at, are coming. Also, it falls on the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Nothing is an accident. All of this is biblical. Um, what I saw this morning in the moon, it looked so bizarre. It looked like a giant snake worm thing was coming out, like over the moon. It was a cloud, y'all, but it, it, and Father's saying wormwood is here, okay? People are manifesting that took the, you know, the thing and... Zombies are among us. So this was a portal that opened. I'm having to show it on my camera. So here's this. That's in the sky, and it actually looks like a ship. Hopefully y'all can see this. But hold on to the end because this gets really amazing. So if y'all didn't see this before, this is just amazing. There it is from a distance. Let's see. Oh, it's got it on here. It was on the 7-27-2023. But when I got the gate, the Lion's Gate opening, I think it was on the 28th. Okay, that's where it starts. It's like a... a Swirl, whirlwind thing. See it? Wow. It's thunder outside. We're not supposed to, it's not supposed to rain today. Okay, that's, it's getting a little bit bigger.
That's still nothing yet. Wait till y'all see this, if you hadn't seen it yet. If you need to, hit pause and zoom in on it if you can. I'm just going in order of how it started appearing. That's still nothing, y'all. Wait till you see this if you hadn't seen this on the other channel. So this actually started opening. And what Father showed me is he is opening the door to heaven to those of his that believe. Those that have kept the faith, have not denied him, did not bow down to the mark of the, you know, and didn't sell their soul. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little better. This was right outside my door. Okay, but that's, that's still not the most amazing one. Here it is again from a distance. It was golden, y'all. It was a golden, bright golden color. This is outside in the sky. It looks exactly like a door opening. See right here? This camera's kind of heavy. Sorry, I'm, this is an, my, I call it my old clunker. They're always hacking or stealing my phone, so I'm grateful I had this. Look at this thing. So the date is the 27th, 7-27-2023. It says 2240, but this thing is two hours slow, so it was 24. I think it was right after midnight. It was right, yeah, it was actually the 28th when the, when the gate opened, but it says the 27th because this is set to New Mexico time, and I'm in the south now. So it was like two hours behind. But, but look at this. That looks like a door opening in heaven. And it's golden. Hold on. Now let me get the next one. Here it is again. So see how the cracked door now opened? I haven't seen this. I have not seen anybody else have this on you, boo. And let's see, that's it. It looks exactly like a door that opened. This one was really amazing. So what Father showed me is the lion's gate opened those that are the tribe of Judah, the lion, which by the way, my last name means lion. <laughs> um, we're, we're being ushered in, but it, it means anybody that believes in Jesus Christ, okay? It doesn't matter what your color is, how old you are, what your nationality is, none of that. Father created all of us in his image. However, if you desecrate his image by changing your D, you know what, A, not the DA in the courtrooms, <laughs> You're no longer his image. You're what? Seed of the serpent. The seed of the serpent races here. I am seeing all kinds of snake worship now. That's a whole nother story. I'm going to make a, a whole video on that. But yeah, they are now showing themselves. They're shedding their skin and they're coming out. And those that took it and have not repented, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be good is all I'm going to say. But Father is showing me that he is calling us into his kingdom. The gate has opened, the lion's gate, those that believe in Yeshua. Remember, Yeshua came first as a lamb. He died to self and was crucified, was a sacrifice for our sins. Okay? Next time he comes back, which is now, I'm not saying today, but this is the season. This is the time frame. Um, he comes back as what? A roaring lion. Not like what does Lucifer the lion loser do? He mocks and tries to copycat because he has no creativity. He copycat what the Most High God does. So he's a roaring lion seeking those he can what? Destroy. 
But Yeshua comes back as a roaring lion this time. He comes back with a sword. Okay? They think he's this little meek, hippie dude. Hey, man, peace. No, he's, he's going to whip those tables. He's going to whip it. Whip it real good. So Father is calling us to the gate, but we have to be made pure, made white, okay? Um, and we do that by dying to self daily, picking, our, picking up our cross daily. Obe obedience is better than sacrifice. P Father keeps telling me, I'm sorry, I don't know why I can't talk right now. It's an attack right now. And Father God, I ask you to help me, help me to speak your word, help me to get finished with this. Get jiggy with it. Okay. Father says, stop paying attention to the satanic cabal. They're all distractions. All these different things are doing, and this is going on, and that's going on, and all that. It's all a distraction to get you off of your path, off of your purpose, to focus on the lower things, the things of this world. If you speak on it, you feed the beast. If you dwell on it, you feed the beast. If you look at all this negative stuff going on and start talking about it, you, dwell, you feed the beast, okay? Instead, focus on your purpose, your mission from God, and your salvation. We are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, and that's what I've been doing for the last week. Let me tell you, I have been fearful and trembling, not because of the Satanists and the witches and the gang stalkers, oh my, because of me not being right with the Lord and, and hurting his heart, okay? He mourns for us when we sin. He's sad. So we have teams of angels above us that are cheering us on, y'all. I saw it, by the way. I had a dream. I don't know. I think it was about maybe a, anywhere between a week and a half and two weeks ago. And I dreamt that I saw a giant portal open in the sky and it was round, okay? And there was shadows of people walking around and then looking down. And then I said, let me get my camera in the dream. And I went to get my camera and I was able to take one picture and then it closed. And I'm like, does that mean I'm, I'm blocked out of heaven? I was really upset about the dream at first. And Father has revealed to me that what was about to happen, he was trying to warn me. Shut that door. Don't open it. Be by yourself. Stay by yourself. Don't hang out with pe don't hang out with these people, okay? Don't let these people in that literally come banging on my door, banging so loud it sounded like cops were going to bust the door in. And it was these wrong people, okay? And I was just wanting a friend so bad and no. Father said no. So he was trying to show me what was about to happen. But the, the door shut, but he was showing me the shadows of the arcs and our team, our family in heaven that are watching us and they're cheering us on. So we don't want that door to shut. So now he's opening it again. But we have to be made pure. That's another interesting thing I wanted to share with y'all. One last thing that's pretty funny is... I had a white blazer, and I hardly ever wear white. I'll wear like beige or stuff like that, but not a lot of white because it'll get dirty. Like <laughs> I'm like such a tomboy and just messy and whatever. Anyway, um, and I had it, I don't know, I think it was about a year ago. The first time I wore it, it was hot out, but I didn't have much else to wear because I didn't have summer clothes because um, I'm on foot and I have to move a lot. And... Uh, I can only carry so much with me, so I had like one suitcase. Actually, I had two suitcases this was before they stole my other one. Um, and uh, so it was hot out, but that's all I had, so I put it on. It was my first time to wear it, and it was stolen because it was hot, so I took it off, and then I had like a crappy T-shirt on under it. <laughs> they stole it, so that was the first time I had that. Then I got another one. I was like, oh, I found it on sale on eBay. I'm so excited. And it was, a, it was a white linen blazer. And again, I don't buy a lot of stuff, so it was a big deal for me. And this was last year. Now, this time, it was cold out. So now I had summer clothes. Now I had to leave those and get winter clothes. 
And so I got that and I wore it the first time and it was also stolen. I took it off somewhere and put it like on a park bench. I don't know what I did with it. That one, I can't say I was, it was technically stolen. I may have just lost it, but it was gone. First time I wore it. So now I have the third one, the third white blazer. And I've never, ever bought a white blazer. I had a cream blazer when I was like, I don't know, in my 20s. And that was the only even semi-white thing that I've had. But Father kept leading me to buy these things. And I'm like, if you're leading me to buy this, why do I keep having it stolen or lost? Three times. This last one, he's saying, you have to make your, your temple pure. You have to purify your temple. We will be dressed in white linen. Isn't that amazing? And by the way, it's linen. I was like... Don't tell me. He guided me to, this is off the cuff, so I didn't write this down, but there's a scripture about it. I think it's in Revelation, those dressed in white linen. Let me see. That are made pure. Uh, let me see. I don't know where it is. It's, I think it's in Revelation, but it was talking about uh, that those that were dressed in white linen, they had been made pure. And it's like the third time I get three chances. This is like my wake up call, my shaking. Okay. So we don't want to, to fail and father not receive us. It's really scary y'all. So I just want to stress if, if you're still sinning, please repent. Please repent and turn to him. And uh, I'm asking for y'all's forgiveness for me. Not being a good, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to call it. Not being a good prophetess, not being a good um, mentor, not being a, a faithful servant, not being not being obedient to the most high God. And I'm, I'm very sorry. And like I said, father has been reprimanding me and I'm just very grateful. And it's funny that I have this new blazer and I haven't worn it yet. It's not actually new. It's a used blazer that I actually, I'll get stuff at resale shops and, and yes, I pray over them. I know they do witchcraft on all that stuff, but father will have me guide me to certain things. And he, I know he wants me to have it. I'm like, well, if you got me to get the same one twice, why would I get it again? Is it just going to get stolen? He's like, this is your third chance. Wake up. Wake up and turn to me, and I will cleanse you from the inside out, and you will be made new. You will get your white garments to ride alongside Yeshua in the final battle where we get our white pegasus. And I got another story about that, but I'm making this too long, so I just want to encourage y'all that uh, Father is with us. If you're going through this fiery trial, the the attacks are, are worse than they've ever been, um, and they're going to continue to get worse and worse because we're in the end of the end. So instead of complaining like I've been doing, murmuring and complaining and focusing on what the enemy's doing and his minions, the satanic sellouts, start praising the Lord, thanking him for choosing you. Thank him for not allowing you to die in your sins. Thank him that he gave us this breath. This We're still here. We're still standing better than we ever were. Looking like a true survivor. Feeling like a little kid. But um, yeah, we're, we're persevering. We are called to endure to the end. And there's a, <laughs> there's a sign. So um, whatever they're saying... Don't focus on it. Focus on Father and start talking about what he's doing. But the fallen are here. Um, they're leading people into the pit. They're taking over people. They're taking over vessels. I believe that they are going to um, lock people in. We're going to have lockdowns again. But we're not to fear. Father will guide us. He provided for me during all these different storms that were really bad hurricanes. And he guided me through. And he'll do it for you too if you love him. Okay? 
And we have to have faith in him no matter what. Praise him in the midst of the storm, y'all, which, which there's a storm coming. Um, the entire America is on fire, fire, fire in the hole. And that's even funny. The other day, some guy got a package and made sure he wanted me to see it. He like ripped it open in front of me. I always have in this weird kind of clown shows. And it was some big banner that said fire on it. And uh, me and another sister, <laughs> I pray, were talking about, it reminded me of when I was a kid, um, again, with the fire. It's like been around for a long time that Father put this fire, fire, fire in the hole. I've been saying that the whole time that I've been on this channel or on Jubilina channel. Fire in the hole, there's something to that. How the fire trucks are always following us, TIs, right? Um, yeah. And when I was a, a kid, I forgot about this, but I was reminded of it this past week or two that I won this thing in school. I think I was in fourth grade. Even that's funny, four, cat four and the four angels. And it was some fire prevention thing. And I made this poster and I painted these little cute, it was like fire, but they looked like little round blobs and they had like happy faces and they were running and I won. There's something significant. And guess what I got y'all? A blue ribbon, the blue star, the blue kachina. Oh, that's, thank you, Father. That's what, I knew there was something else I wanted to say. Wow, I'm making this long. So the fires in Maui Wowie, I'm just gonna make this real brief about that. They were saying that um, there was, the only things not burnt was a, a blue shirt, blue umbrellas, and a blue car. And about a week before that happened, I heard the song in my, you know, in my spirit. And then I went out and yes, I went out, out, my bad. That's why I've been repenting. And I heard it. I have a blue house. I live, I have a blue car and my, and my girl is blue too, or something like that. I can't remember. And father showed me that blue, like the AV or not the aviators. What is it called? Avatars. The avatars are blue. Well, what else is blue? marine spirits the mermaids are blue they are going to be coming out it's also mocking the blue star the blue kachina the blue planet which is coming down okay but the blue in the fires in hawaii the blue umbrellas blue car and blue shirt were not burnt and everything else was and father showed me that it was because of the directed energy, you know what, for shizzle that hit a lot of us TIs for years and years and people think we're insane in the membrane. They were actually used, okay, beams of light. And because it's done with a blue beam, the blue reflects off of it. So that was pretty amazing. But Father showed me about the blue. Okay. So, they're blue lasers. We have a blue moon, which is tomorrow, during where these storms are coming. The blue star, blue kachina, blue plate special. I mean, everything is mocking. They've been telling us in our face for years and years, but people didn't catch on to it. Laughing about it. The blue plate special, okay? The blue light special, and I think they have that at Walfart. Blue light, get it? The beam of light, the, the lasers, the D-E-W, George W. Bush. And when we're successful, and we will be, said the serpent. Said the sleestack. No, you won't be. You might be successful in the beginning because Father's allowing it, but you're going to be burning in the pit for all eternity. Anyway, let's start again. The blue lasers, then they had the blue cars, the blue umbrellas, and the clothes that were blue that didn't burn in the 
Y'all can like type it in and it'll probably come up. There was a couple different videos that I was led to about it. And I'm like, wow, um, that were in Lahaina that didn't burn while everything else did. Oh, and there was a blue roof on a house. Then Father gave me that song about a week before this all happened. I, live, I have a blue house and my car is blue too. The blue star kachina, the blue plate special, the blue light special. Um, also, I have a picture of a demon that was outside. I'm making this too long and it'll take me a while to go back, but I'll try to remember to share it in another video of a demon that manifested as a person, but they were completely covered in black clothes with a gold mask on. And when I took the picture, the thing basically disappeared, but you could see a blue light through it. And Father said that's Arch Michael. And it, my, Archangel Michael, which is some of our protectors, y'all, we've got high-ranking angels around a lot of us. So don't fear, okay? Father's got our back up. But um, it looked like a lightsaber, a blue sword, and it was in the picture. And the, but, the, but the being was not in the picture. I'll make that in another video because I, I want to just show that and make it a quick video, okay? I might try to upload that next if y'all are curious about it. It was amazing. I took three pictures, and this thing did not show up. You can just see the outline of it. But the blue light was there. So it was a demon that had manifested a fallen is what it was. Um. I also have been seeing blue lights hitting the mirror in the wall at the last place I was at. And that's the the D, D the you know what, W. The curtains in uh, the place that I was were blue. Um, the, the last vehicle I drove before they did their little fun games the uh, Buford T. Disjustices, it was, <clears throat> it was blue. And then, what is the opposite of blue? On the color wheel, it's red, okay? Red is the opposite. Most of us are targeted with red and black, or red, black, and white, okay? That's Satan's colors. The red pill or the blue pill? Well, in the Matrix movie, of course, Satan flips everything upside down. The red pill is you woke up, but we're actually blue team. It's like two teams battling. So the red, the red gang stalkers, they were red. A lot of them drive red or they drive black. And then the last vehicle I had was blue, and I am blue too. Um, then, this is really cool, y'all. <clears throat> About two weeks ago, when I went out, I went to a restaurant. I was lured to the restaurant by a friend that was a Judas, who's part of the world, and yes, he took it, because he was going to pay me money back that I really, really needed. And he never showed up. So I sat there waiting. It was all to lure me to try to get me to drink. And uh, the guy in there called me Blue Star. He nicknamed this other guy something, and then I said, well, what's my nickname? He goes, Blue Star. That is a huge sign. In the movie Escape to Witch Mountain, the little girl has a box. She can't remember where she came from, but she's got a box in it, and it's got a blue star, blue and gold, okay? Then uh, my friend in New Orleans, which was my little dog that has gone on to be with Yeshua, that a lot of y'all knew she was the tiniest targeted individual. Her name was Beignet. Beignet. In the movie Escape to Witch Mountain, they have Uncle Benet. But her little friend in New Orleans that was my friend, uh, his dog's name was Blue. There's also a guy uh, that I know with another friend, and his name is Bilu. Then my sa the same friend that named his dog Blue worked for Blue Dog, which was George Rodriguez, which is a famous artist. He's passed, but, and he did the famous Blue Dogs out of New Orleans. Then recently I've been having people carrying around Miller Lite boxes, and I couldn't figure this out. I'm like, what does it mean? 
light. We are the light. They're trying to contain our light and put it in a box. And everywhere I've been seeing Miller Light boxes. And then I'm like, I wonder if Miller Light, which I know is like a Texas beer, Texas, but I wonder if Miller, and I'm not in Texas. I wonder if Miller Light happens to be blue. Sure enough, it's blue and gold, and it's got a gold star on it. And when I got the Fire Awareness Art Award, I got a blue ribbon. It's just amazing, y'all. So the red, it's the red team against the blue team, like the Democrats against the Republicans, and Michael, Arc Michael, is cobalt blue. And uh, he's been revealing himself to me lately, y'all. So Michael is boots on the ground. We've got thousands of angel armies around us. So don't be in fear. Just keep your eyes above on the Most High God. And he is, he is calling us back home to him through the gate, okay, the narrow gate, the door, the door in heaven. Remember, he said he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing for us that nobody can contain, that nothing can contain. So if you're having everything stripped from you like me, and you're back to like begging for pennies, can you spare some change for an old buccaneer? Count it all joy, because our blessings are in heaven. We're not of this earth. That's why Father's never allowed me to own anything here, because he wants us to not have anything to do with a satanic system. So don't be blue, a blue suede shoes, a step on my blue suede shoes. So anyway, I just want to encourage y'all that Father is really working here. There's going to be a lot more fire, fire, fire in the hole. They're going to be entrapping people into cities, but we're not to what? Have fear. We're not to focus on what they're doing. Focus on what the Most High God is doing, but to be aware and stay in prayer and don't be scared. I'm out.